My name is Glyn Seal and welcome to Role Playing Cartography. Hello, uh, thanks for joining me again. Um, what I want to do today is add some colour to this uh, dungeon map that um, I started in uh, episode one. Um, you can see that I've completed it uh, in more detail now. So the um, the shading and the, the rest of the, the wall bricks and, and that sort of stuff, they're all now um, contained uh, in the illustration. So <clears throat> I, I've kind of rearranged some of the layers a bit here and now everything's sort of grouped so that I can switch it on and off. And um, one thing that we'll get to is the, the shading that's the, the kind of hat shading that I normally do or this kind of um, it's it's like the, the Copic marker effect uh, shading uh, I've missed a bit there add that back in um, I do that differently when I do colour I'll create some separate layers for that so for the moment I'm just going to switch that that um, kind of shadow hatching and, and Copic effect off and we we're going to, to apply some uh, basic colors so what do I tend to do first um, you, you can do this in Photoshop probably just as easily um, but for me there's a lot of the brushes that I've got set up uh, in ArtRage that I like to use um, and so that's kind of where I tend to do most of my color work so let's uh, let's get some uh, let's create a, another layer and we'll call this floor so this is going to be the floor coloring that I, I'm using for the for the dungeon now what you'll also see is that I've created over on this side some floor tiles and the reason for that is I'm going to do that in a different colour and that's also going to be used to show how I shade and highlight things it will give that room a little bit more detail so let's uh, let's choose a kind of stony grey colour and this this is going to be very rough all I'm doing is just making sure that I've got color over the tops of what will be the floor now this area here I'm going to just darken a little bit this is um, a blending marker type tool uh, that I'm using here <coughs> which is just kind of blends the colors together as you as you put it down and I'm just going to mix that bit which will be the change in floor pattern uh, floor coloring so this edge because I'm not going to do anything with this edge after I'll leave it like that <coughs> and I'm going to create another layer on the top called floor texture The colour that I've just used, I'm going to add to my colour palette so I can refer back to that if I need to. Uh, and also this colour here, I've just I've just used um, the Alt key and a selection and it's given me that colour. So I know that this colour here is, is this main floor area. So I've got some brushes that uh, that I like to use. Uh, this Ink W22 is one, so I'm going to add that to my toolbox so I've got access to it. <coughs> Another one I like to use is uh, the Snow Particles. It's just good for adding a bit of texture, uh, a bit of like detritus, a bit of dirt. So let's now this is is the thing if i if i hold down control and select that layer it will select <coughs> the uh, extents of that layer that means i can jump to the floor texture layer whack a load of texture on and it's not going to 
go past where the edges of the selection are. So first thing I'll do, I'll select this brush. It's probably a little bit big for what I want. Go to there. Now, if I select this color, if I put texture on the top, it's not actually going to change anything. So what I do is I just drop it back slightly lighter and then dab some texture on. And then I select it again and then I come back slightly darker. <clears throat> and you can see immediately that's added some nice variation, some nice texturing. I'm going to jump onto the particle brush, make that a little bit smaller again, and maybe go a tiny bit darker. Just add some bits along the wall edges, maybe. Here, especially, because that's where you've kind of come in, it's likely to be dirtier. Corridors and areas where you've got more, more traffic, foot traffic. Okay, maybe come a little bit lighter, just add a few. Okay, so I'm pretty fine with that. So next thing I'm going to do, uh, just drop the selection, and I'm going to add in another layer, and we'll call this walls. <coughs> so, the walls I want to be a contrasting colour, and because that walls layer is on top of the floor and the floor texture layer that we've done it will just go over the top nicely so <clears throat> what i can do let's go for it yeah, i've set auto save up which is frankly necessary uh we'll go for a brownish color add that to my samples and then i want to make sure that i've got wall past where the floor is <clears throat> and a nice healthy margin because I'm going to blur the edges of this just get all that painted in for the moment so I'm then going to blur around these edges and if I blur and expose the floor, <coughs> then uh, then so be it. Try not to. Doesn't matter on that entrance area. Oh, you can see there. So uh, could always just I've selected the floor layer and just faded that back. Okay. So the next bit I want to do is get rid of all of this internal color, which is basically wall color so I can expose the floor from underneath. So in order to do that, if I if I use the magic wand tool and select inside this ink work, because this isn't closed at this end here, it will sort of spill out and uh, make the, the selection a bit of a pain. So I'll just add quick layer above the ink layer and just select the black brush uh, point one that'll do and I'm just going to put a, a little link there to close it off now when I use the magic wand tool I don't want it to use all of the layers I just want to to use the ink layer but this is on a different layer so the easiest thing for me to do is just switch off the walls, switch off the floor texture and the floor, and using this set to current layer, click it. Oh, sorry, I need to be on that ink layer. Actually, it doesn't want to be current layer at all. It wants to be that layer. Let's clear the selection. So, just to recap what I said there, I want to use both this ink layer and this additional layer so I don't I don't want to use the current layer in the selection I want to use all layers and all the layers that are exposed pretty much are just ink anyway so if I select this inside you can see it's just selected inside it hasn't done that because I've got a blockage there but I'll do that manually then switch the walls back on and all my textures drop to the walls layer 
press delete. Now we're going to tidy up the rest of that manually. <clears throat> so we'll drop the selection off, go to the eraser tool, and then let's just go in and do a little bit of manual work. This is where your therapeutic properties <coughs> of painting come to the fore. Brush a bit bigger. Just give that a bit of blur. There. A bit of blur there. <coughs> and the layer where we put this little close off in. I'm just going to delete that now. I don't need it. Um, jump back to the walls layer. We'll actually colour the doors. We'll create a little separate layer for doors and additional things. Such as the uh, sarcophaguses, sarcophagi, sarcophaguses, it's like sheeps. These are recess alcoves for interred bodies wrapped in linen cloth. And then happy with that so next thing we want to do we want to add some texture into this wall layer like we did with the with the floor so we'll select control select the walls layer it basically selects the whole extremities of that this means that when we're applying texture we don't get any over the floor places where we wouldn't want it so I've already got um, the, the wall color set up I'm going to add a new layer called walls texture <coughs> capitals no less and using this brush again just reduce the size down slightly select the wall color come a little bit lighter select it again come a little bit darker You can see what a massive difference the texture brush makes to to the work that you're doing you know it really kind of brings it to life and we're going to add a bit of particle snow effect to it we'll just go with a really light version of a color kind of adds to that stony effect <coughs> okay starting to look really good so now we'll create another layer and we'll just call it bits and we'll add in separate color for things like the sarcophagi so let's make it a dark gray color And this is going to be a, a pool. If 
if I run because I'm on a separate layer, if I, if I run over like that, I can just use the delete tool and tidy up that edge. <coughs> and so I'll do that here. I run over. Use the delete brush. Okay, doors, that was the other thing. So we'll make those a uh, darker brown colour. I've just added that to the samples. I'm just going to add that to the samples as well, so I've got it. So jump back to the brown. going to fill the pool with a sort of manky green colour. <coughs> okay, so we've got oh, one more door. One more door. More door. <coughs> okay. This is the step other, I mean, the texture's really made a difference anyway, but this is the step that really makes it pop. So I know we talked about the shade here. You can see that shade, that grey, doesn't doesn't work on that really. Uh, this looks pretty good. But let's forget about those. We're going to create two brand new layers on top of all of this. And one is going to be called Shadows. And the other one will be called highlights. I use this technique a lot, even on artwork, um, and it's just a very simple way of giving, lifting things off the off the paper, off the screen. So I'm going to set them both roughly down to half, just over. Now I'm going to use some blend mode. So I'm going to select the highlights layer with a blend mode of overlay and the shadows layer with a blend mode of multiply. <coughs> I'm then going to use my watercolour brush. That's obviously that brown colour as a watercolour. On the shadows layer I'm going to use black. And we're going to do like what we did with the Copic marker uh, in, the, in the last video. So we're just going to create shadow And you, you're doing this as if the light's shining from this direction. So it will cast shadows. And on the highlights layer, it will add like white overlaid highlights on the edges of items that will catch the light. So if we're doing a round of shadow first. So you've just got to get your head in the, in the mentality of where the, the shadow and the highlight will be. If you make an error, you just correct it. 
No sweat. And sometimes just don't worry about errors, just leave them in. Sometimes it just doesn't matter. It adds to the style of a piece. Because these are alcoves, you'll have the shadow from the bottom part of the alcove. And then you'll have the shadow in the recess as well. This is a plinth around the sarcophagus. So you get the shadow cast from the plinth and you get the shadow cast from the sarcophagus itself. <clears throat> okay, so one thing I want to do on this, I'm just going to make the brush not quite as big and I'm going to put a shadow on all of these floor tiles. So the kind of this back edge of every tile would receive a bit of shadow or or darker because the edge of the tile is you know uh, chamfered or running over away from the light And the same on this edge. Oh, wrong edge, Glinny. Wrong edge. What you tend to find is if you don't get this right, something just seems a little bit off because your eye is so used to seeing things actually, you know, as they would be. So try and make sure you you get your edges right. Okay. Just going to add a little bit of shade to the relief on the sarcophagus itself. Just adds a nice extra bit of believability. And then when we go to highlights, we just jump in straight over to a white. And any edge that would receive the light coming from this direction. So this here this here, here, any edges that are just catching this light. Auto save. Thank you. corners Hopefully watching this is therapeutic.
Maybe I should do ASMR videos. I don't know whether I've got the voice for that. I'm drawing some shadows and some highlights. Go to sleep. I'll stick to cartography and publishing books and writing adventures and doing layout work. Highlight to the plinth edge, highlight to the sarcophagus edge. The the wider you draw your your highlight, the more the exaggeration of the chamfer on the object or the radius on the object is. So if you like that that line there, this line here is a very thick line, suggesting there's quite a bevel on the chamfer. So I've just made the uh, tool a little bit smaller and then we're going to highlight the the floor tiles as well. And that's kind of the opposite edges to where we've provided the uh, shade. I mean I'm just doing one edge. You can just see these are starting to pop out at you. Okay, so there we go. Now, if you remember from the last episode, we had a page background that was multiplied down, which looks quite nice. We could now drop that to here, leaving that kind of fresh um, ink work without any any extra colors being multiplied into it uh, but I think that looks pretty cool and you could easily stick some adventurers in there for a little little wonder around okay I hope that was useful thank you see you again soon thank you for watching this video and uh, I hope that you found something useful uh, why not consider supporting what I do here by heading over to uh, the Monkey Blood web store at www.monkeybloodesign.co.uk. Uh, check out handy maps, uh, handy A5 size maps that you can use as game inspiration. There's towns and villages, buildings and structures, and dungeons, caves, and strange locales. Um, and you can use these within your game as inspiration, uh, populate them for your, your players to uh, explore and pillage. Enjoy, thank you. <laughs>